educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesamento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to go down the history books a little bit. We got a couple of really cool photos to share with us from our friends down there in Longboat Key, Florida. Uh, the first one is a 1952 Buick, as you can see here, the Riviera, the first of that series. And, as you, and you can see the matching camper that you got with it. <laughs> this goes back a long time, folks. But uh, since we're showing campers and stuff, I wanted to show you one of my, one of my all-time favorites. I'll get it up here to let you see it. And this is a, a big anniversary date, of course, as we all know. We'll get this up here. You'll see here this is the... 1959 Cadillac Coupe de Ville, and you'll see here that it is all pink. And guess uh, wasn't Elvis's car? He had a pink Cadillac, but it wasn't this one. He had a convertible, but they did have matching campers. But usually they were made by Shasta or Windmill or somebody else. I can't remember, but there's a whole bunch of those that were made during that time. And with the price of used automobiles the way they are right now, holy moly, guacamole! way they're going to get to. Now, this is the day that Elvis passed away on August the 16th of 1977, one of the scariest days of my life. It, uh, I had just finished my first year to the day of working for Drexel Burnham Lambert, and I was on my way home to take the kids swimming like I always did. And by golly, I got to the to the garage, and the garage was open, which was very unusual, and there was my little daughter my little nine-year-old daughter sitting there with uh, tears in her eyes, crying her eyes out. And I pulled up and she says, oh, daddy, she says, you're going to be so sad. Someone has died. And I said, where is your sister? She says, it's not Laren, dad. She says, Elvis has died. And I'll tell you, for the first time, even though I was a big fan of Elvis, I was really relieved. I, I, I called Jilly this morning to remind her about that. She doesn't remember it. But... Uh, that's uh, that's what happened uh, on that day in 1977. It was also a very important day for me in 19. Excuse me. Let's get back to that uh, time in 1986. Uh, that was the day that I got a letter from my aunt from Louise's restaurant in Terre Haute, Indiana. It was a note from Dr. Ruth Miller, and I I, I wish I I had the letter, but uh, I lost it over a period of years. And basically, she had, I, she said, I know you like Fibonacci numbers, but the uh, November soybeans are going to go off the board, and I think the price was around 5.96. So I I put that on my machine, and I because I was basically doing. Um, I just finished my work at Commodity Corporation. And I was doing legal expert witnessing with Eddie Horwitz, and so I was quite busy at that. But about a month later, I noticed that it was right at that price that it went off the board. And so I called Ruth. Now, I didn't know Ruth very well at all. I'd only met her a few times. She was a professor there at Indiana. And her husband, John, and her his son, uh, Terry, They I, I did all the speculating for them. Uh, when I was at Drexel, I mean, I did. We did a lot of soybeans and stuff during those years from '76 through '82. We made a lot of money, and so she knew who I was, of course, and of course the family and stuff. But she, I, I called her up and she said, "Look, I know you like Fibonacci says, but I, this stuff is all related to astrology. And why don't you come down to Sarasota?" She said, uh, "We're going to be going down here uh, around the first of September, and uh, maybe why don't you come down and spend the month or two, and I'll teach you some of this stuff." And I said, well, I can't really come then, but uh, maybe later on. And so it happened to be right after Halloween that I went down to uh, Sarasota, uh, not too far from Longboat Key. And I was going to spend two weeks, and I ended up spending two months. I spent all through uh, October, all through November, and I was back in uh, Avila Beach 
uh, in the, I believe I got back on around the 12th of December and I was ready to publish a book. I mean, we literally, I'm not kidding you folks. She was, uh, she was what, 12, she was 15 years older than me. And yet we worked, I'm not kidding you. We worked 18 to 20 hours a day solid for two months. It was so exciting to see some of this stuff. Uh, happen now. The reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is, is that we had a question from someone this more uh, last night about the Bradley model. You know, why don't I use the Bradley model? Well, folks, when I first started using the Bradley model, I got it from Dr. Miller, and it was really, really exciting because it was really showing, you know, how the markets moved, and uh, it, it was spectacular. Actually, in fact, I started my my whole book or my whole newsletter service, Astro Cycles the trader's viewpoint uh, on that Bradley model because I mean it was really good and I'm and I was up in the top 10 or higher in all of the rating services and so I you know you could really tell that it's working the problem is folks along the way and remember I'm just an old cowboy I'm like old curly I know how to do one thing and that's AB equals CD and how to control risk after that you know you're gonna have to write uh, write a new letter I know I've got an IQ I know I've told you about my IQ being 180 but remember I had to take it three times I got it 60 each time to get to that 180 level so it takes a while to you know simulate all this stuff for me I was fortunate enough to have Jim Twentyman, you know, at, at my side this whole way. He's been my oldest friend since 1965, and uh, when we met at um, <clears throat> at, the, at the brokerage firm there in uh, Los Angeles, uh, run by uh, Roy Longstreet, and w what we were trying to do was to, uh, through the years, you know, he worked with me at Drexel because he's the first person I hired. And, uh, you know, it was really uh, turned out to be really good. And we're still friends to this day. But Jim's a, Jim's a mathematician and his whole thing is about numbers and astrology. So he was a natural person to do this. Let me just show you that the Bradley book basically was a 47 page book written in 1946 by Donald Bradley. OK. And basically what he did, he said, that the, the, I'll just show you what it looks like. It said these planets line up and I'm going to give you my two cents worth here. I probably botch it a little bit but I got a lot of this information from uh, Shane Smolian this morning but this is what he was looking at he was watching these planets clustering up now this happened to be March the 5th of 19 uh, excuse me <laughs> of, of 2009 that was March the 5th of 2009 you can see all the planets are lined up uh, in one area which we thought that was going to be something really big well at that time I was doing a lose dollar here for TFNN and I wrote the letter and the thing that I put on the letter and that I you know it doesn't work like this all the time folks but boy when it does pay attention to it because there's something to it you'll see that you have this beautiful pattern you can see the three drive to a bottom pattern forming here we've got the Dow setting right there folks at uh, right around six six seven I believe that's where the Dow was at that time uh, and basically, from there, we went a great deal higher. What I said in the letter that day, you could, this red line is the Bradley model, okay? And the rest of it is the patterns that we're looking at. But I said this will be the largest short covering rally we've had since 1938, and that was a big one. And, of course, we went from here and uh, above, uh, I think we, we, we went to near 40,000 in this thing. So let's take a little break. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. 
This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're talking about the Bradley model, and I'll reintroduce the Bradley model again. 47 pages written in 1946 by Donald, uh, Donald P. Bradley, and I think he sold maybe 20 books. They were $2 a piece as a paperback, and uh, Dr. Miller had it, and so we uh, put it together. J Jim did all the programming later on. Ensign did all the programming, but you know we went back and checked. It's very, very good. The difference is, folks. You know, I have some guests on here that are really, really smart with this stuff, and you know Shane is right up there at the top of the list. Norm Winsky, <coughs> excuse me, Cycles Research over there in, in Austria is is, is uh, awfully good. Tim Bost is awfully good, and they use this, and they know they know far far more than I do about it. <clears throat> what I do is I know patterns pretty well, and that's that's what I that's what I rely on, folks. I mean, we, I'm going to be doing that in just a moment here, but I just wanted to show you how this stuff all worked out. As you notice here, we're setting right over a major Bradley day right now, uh, starting tomorrow on the 17th. So I think that's uh, keep an eye on that because we're in some really really good areas here. Now I came into this market uh, Sunday night uh, looking to be uh, bearish, but boy, folks. Uh, once it started up, I said, oh, there is absolutely no way you can be bearish. I'll show you that uh, in just a moment because uh, it continued to do exactly what it did yesterday is doing the same thing today. But I did want to cover this about the, the Bradley model, and uh, that's, uh, that's really all I wanted to, to cover. But it does work. It doesn't work all the time, but guess what, boys and girls? Nothing works all the time, and that's the thing you've got to to really uh, believe uh, that we're what we're talking about here. Now let's just talk a little bit. Yesterday we talked about the Dow Jones and how bullish it was and everything, but I wanted to show you what's happened here after we we looked at this market yesterday. You you'll get a pretty good idea of why the market looks so doggone bullish today. I mean it's pretty silly to be even thinking about being bearish. When the market won't back off at all. Now here's here's the E-mini S&P. You know there's that level we were looking at up there, at uh, 42.99. Uh, 
A high was, uh, what, 43.02. Look where we came to this morning, folks. Went right down to a 3.82. Now, we went a tiny bit below this a little bit later, making a new low by about four or five points. And then, of course, we've continued to go much higher, getting up to around 43.17. That's basically telling you that this market, look how long it took to even make a 3.82 retracement, folks. There's nothing bearish about that. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to to try to to see that that's what's happening, right? And that that's what you're doing with pattern recognition is you're trying to find these patterns and how they fit together and it telling you whether you think it's you know bullish or bearish. Now, if you see a three drive pattern or a one three five pattern, something like that, yeah, totally different. But this is not showing anything like that. This is just a really nice A B C D coming down at a three A two retracement and then rallying another twenty two points. That, that's really what it's doing. If you'll remember, yesterday one of our listeners asked a question about the natural gas. And let's just get, we'll get natural gas up here because I think this is a good way to uh, describe the same thing that we're seeing here in the E-mini S&P. We saw the same thing in natural gas. We saw the same thing in crude oil, but the crude oil one was upside down. Let's get up here and take a look at it here. Here is the natural gas on the daily basis. If you'll remember, we talked about the fact that the previous day's low was setting right there at a 382 retracement, and then the market goes up and makes new highs. So what do you think happened today, folks? What happened yesterday? Maybe it's going to happen today, but you ought to try to expect it because it'll give you a pretty good indication that, yeah, what happened yesterday it's going to happen again today because you know why? These markets repeat and repeat and repeat until they don't repeat. And that's what your job is as a pattern recognition swing trader is when they stop repeating, then you have something to look at. But you can see here, again, right at your exact 382 retracement. And it's a perfect ABCD, ABCD, right at 382. And where is it rally? Another uh, $4,000 up in the natural gas. I mean, you're talking something that's got a margin of like 3800 This is big-time money, folks. So, you know, watch it. It's not an easy one, but by golly, it's got some great patterns in there that are certainly, uh, you know, predictable, you know, within limits. And that that's really what we're – that's what we're trying to do is to get within limits. So let's get back to the, the one on the crude oil because crude oil was one we focused on last night. And the reason why we did that, I'll bring it up here so you can see it. This was done long before these prices ever hit these levels, folks. This was, just get up here one second here. This was done this morning and I did these last night um, up to this level. You can see here, we're making a beautiful ABCD pattern. Tiny bit above the 382, goes above the 382 by about 300 bucks. And then it starts down, and it's going down, 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 down all day long. We're now, folks, believe it or not, we are $4,000 under that level in the crude oil. Let's get it up here because we've just made new lows here just a little while ago, and I want to spend a moment uh, about that, too, because um, each time, the last two times, that we've been down to this level of 8,700. And if you remember, that was the 61% retracement on the long-term weekly. And from there, we went from 8,700, folks. We rallied all the way up. We rallied $10 a barrel. And then you can see where we are right now. Now, we've just made new lows. Now, we made new lows before the other two times, and we've rallied four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. So what I'm doing is, is see if I can find a small pattern on this little tiny pattern that I'm looking at, this half hour to 15 minute chart, to see if there's a place, a little three drive or something that might give me a place to enter where I don't have to risk an arm and a leg. And there's one arm and there's two arm. I don't want to risk any more than that. So I'm talking a risk of about $400. I have not seen anything like that as of yet. It just keeps cascading down. If you'll remember from the newsletter, we said watch for a 382 retracement because if we break below the 8,700, the ABCD structure on this, folks, hold on to your hat. No, it's not 84. No, it's not 85. No, it's not 79. It's $73 a barrel for crude oil. And I don't think the folks over there in Riyadh and Mecca are going to like it to see their prices drop another 
15 or 20 percent. And here they are being so kind as to increase production now to help us out. Hello, operator. Uh, does anybody believe that stuff? Yeah, there must be a few people out there that believe it. Anyway, that's what we're watching here in the crude oil option in a uh, thing. But, but you also, you got to keep in mind two other things, folks. One is heating oil. And the second one is gasoline. Both of those are still substantially above. They're still at least the 61% retracements of these things, okay? So we've got a chance to uh, maybe make a bottom down in here. But right now, it's not giving us any sign at all. And all I'm doing is, you know, trying to find a place to say, okay, this is a pattern that I believe in. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not. But I know it's going to work more than it's not going to work. And if it pays me, it's going to pay me more than I'm going to risk. And that's what trading is all about. I don't need a Bradley book. I don't need to read an astrology book. And believe me, folks, I've been afraid of astrology ever since I started doing it. Uh, is there a fan? Yes, there is a fan nearby. <laughs> Very good. I can't turn it off. We lost air conditioning yesterday. Our air conditioning is broken. We're waiting for the guy to come by. <laughs> Sorry about that. Al, I, I, I have to keep it on because it's 90 degrees. If I don't have it, I'll melt. Very good, Al. It's got good acoustics, as they say in the If trade. you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, I was uh, <laughs> getting ready to do a really nice presentation on the 135 pattern that I have uh, listed here. Uh, in my uh, program thing that I usually teach during the, when I do the all-day trading sessions, but someone asked several questions about it, and unfortunately, the PowerPoint will not show up uh, in the in the in the charts, and so I'm not able to, uh, not able uh, to do that. So that's it. Okay. By the way, it's only 90 degrees here today, so it's only going to be as high as about 99. 
And so it's not, uh, you know, it's it's warm, but you know, remember they didn't have air conditioning, you know, till the last hundred years. So uh, you can imagine how things were many, many years ago. Now I do have a chart talking a little bit about the one three five pattern, but nothing like the PowerPoint that I wanted to share with you. So, oh dear, now what's happened? Now I've lost the. Uh, Oh, darn, I lost the cord. I lost Discord again. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay, give me one second here, folks, to try to get this up here. Uh, I don't know why it's not working, but okay, here's where we are. Let's hopefully we'll get this up and working. There we go. Hopefully it won't get knocked out of the room. All right, there we go. All right, now this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, folks. You're seeing the ABCD pattern on the downside. You remember we talked about that back on June the, the 18th when we had that major low down there. It's when the whole world was bearish. And as a matter of fact, speaking of bearish, I see Jamie Dimon came out today reiterating the fact that there is a financial hurricane coming, and it's probably going to be worse than a recession. Well, there's only thing one worse than a recession, folks. And you know what the recession is, is when uh, you uh, your uh, neighbor's out of work, but not you. <laughs> if you're out of work, it's a depression. So anyway, you can see this is the ABCD pattern. I, I, dri I have dripped. <laughs> Let's try it again, Larry. I have drawn the trend line from A, C to down to where we are, up to where we are now. You'll see we're within a heartbeat now of the 78% retracement of the whole move down, folks. Now, if you believe A, B, C, D to the downside down there at uh, 32,000 and change, and now we're several thousand points higher, right? Okay, well, we're right up there at 78% level. Now, I, I pointed this out because we've had since – since Sunday night, the market would not back off at all. It backed off 40 handles and came right back, I mean, right back to the high. And the 40 handles, where was it? Exactly 382. And that was in the middle of the night. By the time you guys got up here in the morning, on Monday morning, this thing had already started to rally, and we've started to rally. The Dow Jones has been the leader. Now, we've broken through this line. I don't, I don't know if it's a valid trend line or not. Uh, it probably is because this happened to be a 61% uh, retracement at point C. But we are now coming up to a major resistance at uh, 34,000 uh, in the uh, Dow Jones E-mini. So watch that number uh, very, very closely. We're, I think we'll probably hit it sometime today. 32,008, I think, is the exact number. And that's going to be very close to the 4335 in the E-mini S&P that we've uh, mentioned uh, before because we went just like in the s and just like in the Dow Jones the same thing happened you know with the S&P we went through those numbers you know like they didn't exist and folks when that happens you know you you can't uh, you, you know you can't stand in front of it let's just bring this one up here uh, on the E-mini S&P cuz you're going to see how close it is this was the one that was done over the weekend, because all I was doing was showing you the relationships that we're looking with the Dow, we're looking at the S&P, and you can see the 78% level, 61% uh, retracement. It's going to be 61% on the S&P, 78% retracement on the Dow Jones. So that, that should be happening when? Well, let me see. we got a Bradley model market due to tomorrow, okay? Now, I believe in those dates because I've seen them for the last 40 years. And if I didn't believe him, I wouldn't. I mean, if you could have seen this thing, how it operated between 1989 and 1995, it was six years where it was just absolutely perfect. I mean, I was on so many news programs and, you know, panels and stuff showing you what that model was. And that all I was doing was just following what the model did. And it was just spectacular during those years. Then for a period of time, it was off and on, you know, back to the old 50, 60 percent level. Lately, it's back in that area of maybe 60, 65 percent. But the, the key to remember is when you got a Bradley date and you got prices and time coming together at the same time, that's when you want to pay attention to it. I thought it was going to be last Wednesday or Thursday. Never happened. Kept going higher. Can't stand in front of that one. Find a new toy to ride. You know, that's uh, that's basically it. I, I couldn't believe it today because uh, one of my friends uh, over in California, Michael Weintraub, uh, he, he, bought a, uh, he bought a Ram truck, a used one, folks, 
a used truck, uh, you know, one of these big Ram 1500 with all the boy, uh, bells and whistles. Do you know it was a used one? He sold it for over $100,000, and he had people waiting in line to buy it. The original uh, cost on the sticker, it was a year old, sticker price was 87000 He sold it for 13000 more than the original sticker price, weighing one year old with 12,000 miles. You think that uh, new used car market's going nuts. It looks like pork bellies did during the 60s, for heaven's sakes. So anyway, getting back to this, uh, we're going to find out whether this is going to work or not. Fortunately, we're going to be having a lot of time here to spend the rest of today and then again uh, tomorrow. And uh, we'll have our guests hopefully on Thursday and Friday, but we'll be able to watch this unfold. But the numbers we're looking at are 34,000 in the Dow Jones E-mini, and the number in the S&P is uh, 4335. Uh, so watch 4335. That's the 78% level. We're only about, oh, 17 handles away from that. So we're very, very close. Now, that doesn't mean you can – sure, you can do it right there. You can do the trade right there if you like. Or if you wanted to be cautious, wait until the market backs off and sell the first uh, 382 retracement or, or the first ABC counter trend. That's another way, you know, to do it. There's a lot of things with pattern recognition that you can do. And I wish I was able to bring them all up here to show you, uh, you know, what they're all about. But uh, I will be doing this uh, – PowerPoint presentation on the next time I do a um, full day trading session, which will be sometime in probably late September. That'll be my last one uh, for the year. And uh, the last one we did was very successful, and hopefully that was in May. And we're going to be doing another one here. I'm going to be doing some traveling in um, October, November. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, across the pond over there to do some stuff with. Uh, David Paul and Tom Hugard uh, in Denmark and also in London and also probably in Dubai. But Dubai is still uh, still up in the air. We don't know for sure whether that's going to be, to be correct or not. Someone is asking a question to, to reshow the picture of the uh, Dow Jones back in uh, November, the uh, excuse me, March the 5th of 2009. I'll bring this up here. And show you what it was doing. All I was doing here, folks, was showing the uh, Bradley model. That's in red. And then the prices were, you can see the prices are on the bar charts. And we were looking at that. There you can see the ABCD right down there. And uh, we were just about ready to go uh, to the upside. I believe the Dow Jones, I don't remember. Um, I know the S&P was right around, the, right around the devil's number, right around 666. I don't know if I can see this one. In the, uh, I bet I can, just a second. Yeah, the Dow was trading right at 6,700 is where it was. And uh, from 6,700, of course, we, we rallied a tiny bit from there. I, I really believe that it was going to be the biggest rally since 1938, and it a little uh, surpassed that by uh, two stretches of the imagination. Hey, we'll take a break. 877 927 6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, I've been uh, fortunate enough to uh, Mr. BV down there in Texas send us a nice little chart of the E-mini S&P showing you what we were talking about just a moment ago, going back a few few extra days. But you can see the relationships that you're looking at here, folks. Those little dotted lines that you see where the lows are being made, those are 382s. And that's why we've not been very bearish. Now, we're going to be watching this thing really closely because we're up against some really strong numbers here. That doesn't mean they're going to stop. We'll have to wait and see. Remember, folks, we had Jamie Dimon, the number one bank in the country. You know, J.P. Morgan came on the tube today. I was listening to him, and he said, boy, this is uh, get ready for a financial hurricane possibly even worse than a recession, is what the president, the CEO CEO of the largest bank in the United, I think it's the largest bank, yeah, it is the largest bank in the United States, is giving a warning like that. Nobody ever does anything like that. The last time that happened was uh, back in uh, 1929 when, uh, what was his name, that, what was the guy's name, starts with a B. Not Barron's. Oh, dear. Roger Babson. Roger Babson came out in July of 29 warning everybody about the hurricane that was coming. And they laughed at him all during July, all during August, part of the first three days of September. After that, they stopped laughing at him, darling. And uh, he was right. That was something. The market went from 1929. We went from 389 in the Dow Jones Industrial Average to July the – oh, got it. Where are you, Basil? It's either the 5th or the 8th. I think it's the 8th of July of 1932. I believe we hit $41 in the Dow Jones and – 16 of the 30 stocks went tapioca, and tapioca in our business means goodbye. So, and not only that, you realize, folks, all during that time, you know how important telephones are. I mean, everybody's got a cell phone and all the other stuff. Do you know that American Telephone went bankrupt three times? And that was from the 29s all the way through the rest of the time. I mean, they, they've had a, you know, a torrid past. They've done relatively well. Now, Apple's done a little bit better than that. But uh, American Telephone had a lot of problems. It was called Telephone at one time. And then American Telephone, and I forget what it was, after AT&T after that, I guess. So, But anyway, that's what we're paying attention to uh, here today. So let's keep an eye on that. Now, we're going to take – everybody's going to get a little vacation today. We're going to go across the pond over there to um, Germany, and we're going to take a look at the German DAX because what is it doing? It's forming the same pattern that we're seeing here in the Stop and P and the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see it's right here. Got that big ABCD hanging in there. 
And again, we've got this key date coming up here possibly uh, tomorrow or uh, Thursday. Maybe, might even go through Friday. I don't know. But sometime here in the next few days, we, we, we're very, very overbought now. So we're ready to see something happen. And it'll most probably come in, you know, as a, as a big surprise. Remember, this market has taken very, very bad news coming out of China starting on Sunday night, you know, with their figures for economic um, uh, expansion were way, way off, 25% uh, worse than they thought. And they, they had to actually drop interest rates to try to stimulate the business a little bit. And that, you know, even that, the market didn't take any of that bad news. I mean, it just kept on going up. So there's nobody paying any attention to it. So you shouldn't either. You know, pay attention to the charts. If they're telling you they're getting ready to go down, get ready and see it. But right now, they're not doing that. That's that's my two cents worth. But there's where we are. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to get back on the old train, and we're going to take it back into, guess where, boys and girls? We're going to go into King's Cross there in London and get off the tube, and we're going to take a look at the FTSE. Now, the FTSE is mainly international stocks, but it does trade somewhat. And our good friend Tommy Hugard trades it, so I want to bring your attention to it. You can see here, also, we're looking at a market that's almost made a new top. Uh, you can see the, the ABCD right here in the middle, just like we had on the intraday S&P. But, you know, look at this green, this green area right here, folks. It's either got to go blasting to the upside in the next day or two, or it's getting ready to roll over. So that's what I'm paying attention to right now is to see – you know what's happening with that as we uh, get ready to come in now the other thing that you know we have crude oil breaking down really badly uh, we've got uh, even even corn is starting to give up uh, some of its gains folks uh, we mentioned it yesterday uh, you know we, we stopped right where we should have in corn up there at 640 we're now down to six, almost six dollars we've dropped 40 cents in the last couple of days again if you trade corn on a half hour basis you'll see the beautiful 382 here early this morning and then the market just rolled over and just uh, just kept going lower and lower and lower and that's uh, that's a sign that uh, there's a bottom coming somewhere, but it might not be for a while. So we got to pay close attention to it. Now, I saved the best for last. I saved the best for last. Okay, now here is the euro. Let's get this up here. This is the easiest one to trade. This is the one that we based everything and statistics on the floor traders handbook on this. But you'll see here, look at these retracement. Folks, that is a downtrend. That's a daily chart. I mean, all you had to do is to get ready to sell some of those rallies, and this was not a bad one, folks. I mean, 382, 382, 382, 382, 382. Now we finally, last night, early this morning, we finally reached some support at the 618. We stayed there for 15 minutes right at the 61% retracement. We didn't go down. We stayed there. And so that was a sign that there was some buying coming in at that point. So if you wanted to take a, you know, a nibble at it at that point, that was giving you a perfectly good place to do it. And remember, this is the most actively traded thing in the world, more than anything else. Heck, it's probably more than everything else combined. Well, it's not quite that big, but it's really big. It's a trillion-dollar market. And so now we've got a possibility here that this could hold at this uh, 112 level. But by golly. Longer term, this is still in a downtrend. It's not given us any indication that it has turned the corner. This is why it's really hard to be bullish gold because if the euro is weak, the U.S. dollar is strong. And when the U.S. dollar is strong, you know, gold doesn't really rally very much. But stop and think, folks. This thing has gone straight down, and yet gold has rallied $150 you got to pay attention to that. I mean, I'm praying that we get a $75 break in gold because I think this is going to be the one that's going to surprise everybody, whether this is going to be this financial hurricane that uh, Jamie Dimon's talking about or not or cryptocurrency, whatever, whatever. I will be watching gold really, really closely. We had a $3 rally in silver right out of the blue, and so that's another one. You've got to pay attention. Maybe the game is changing over there, and they might uh, – you know, something happens, gold could 
you know, Perkins head up because there's still a lot of gold bulls out there, folks. I mean, I've been one since 1974. Well, actually, 72. But well, actually, before that, it was in the 60s with the silver. But anyway, I still think it looks pretty good. I, I'm I really like the. I'm, I've always been attracted to silver and gold coins because they're so beautiful. Plus, they had they've held their value, uh, you know, over the over the uh, time frame. We're gonna have to take a break to pay a few bills here for Tom O'Brien. Um, remember, our guests are gonna be. I believe we're going to have Jim Bartolioni on Friday and Tim Boss on Thursday, or that could be reversed. I'm trying to still work it out. 877-927-6648. Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we've got a few minutes here to take care of business. I posted a chart here of the crude oil. As you can see, since we've been on the air here, it's been just rolling over, rolling over. There's no pattern here at all to give you any type of low risk entry. I mean, we blow, blow through, blew through all the double bottoms and triple bottoms that were here at the 8700, 8690 level, and we're down almost a dollar 
from that level. So, I mean, there's just no way you could stand in front of that. But we have another one that's on the watch list, and this is what we like to do is to pay attention to some of these because when they work and when they do work, they work very, very good. And here is one that we're waiting to see, and that is none other than the old Dow Jones E-mini S&P getting ready to bang into that number that we're looking at right here. You'll see there it is at uh, 34,009, I believe. Uh, there, as you can see, we couldn't make the 382 retracement here in the Dow Jones. We made it in the S&P. We made it in the NASDAQ. We made it in the Russell, but we didn't make it in the Dow Jones. And now we're dancing with the 1.618 number up here at uh, 34,200. Now, at this particular point, you've got two hours to go in the day. The way I would do this, I believe in 1.618 numbers so much, I would sell it there at 34,009. 34, okay, and then I would not risk more than 250 American dollars. 50 handles, 50 points, not 50 handles, 50 points is all I would risk. If it's going to work, it's not going to get above there. It's just going to stay there. And the fact is, you should wait till you see it bounce there and make sure it doesn't go, pat, you know, popping through there by more than 20 or 30 points. Because then I would tell you, yeah, maybe it's not working. But 1.618, boy, you got to, th those are the kinds that, like uh, Yogi Berra said, dance with the girl that took you to the dance. See you on the flip side tomorrow, boys and girls. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.